I started coding when I was eight. I still today understand mathematics and code better than English. That's the way my brain thinks. At age eight, I dreamt of having artificial intelligence. All of the world dreamt of coding artificial intelligence since 1956 was when we thought that we can make computers intelligent. But we never really did. And, uh, and it was, I think, 1995. For the first time in my life, I think the most pivotal moment in the history of technology, if you ask me, if you ask others, it might be different, uh, was a moment I called the Netscape moment. And any of you have ever used Netscape, the web browser? Yeah, you're showing your age. You know, I'm so happy that most of you didn't. I used to work at IBM at the time, and one of our clients had that internet thing. There was mosaic and, you know, and we browsed the internet. And I have to tell you, that moment was the most pivotal moment that makes what we have today, the rise of the internet. But when you really think of 1995, it wasn't the year that the internet was invented. It was the year when the internet was revealed to the world. For 15, 20 years before that, the internet existed. It was growing. It was filling up with knowledge and connections. And the browser was Netscape. It was the first time we realized it existed. This happened again in 2023. ChatGPT came out. For most of us who have not been exposed to AI, uh, you'd think that this is the year where AI met the world. It's not at all. We, I think, found our first breakthrough, and I lived through those events in my careers at Microsoft and Google and so on. We found the first breakthrough in the year 2000 believe it or not, deep learning. We started to think of deep learning in the year 2000. And it wasn't because we figured something out that was new. It was because of the internet, because the internet has been in use for a while, that we had enough patterns, enough knowledge, enough compute power to actually allow computers to be smart. 2009 was the first time we really paused and said, oh, this is real. It was, uh, if you ever want to search for it, it was known as the cat paper. The cat paper was when Google issued a a white paper that basically spoke about an experiment that we did where we took enough compute and we told it to watch YouTube. We didn't tell it what to look for. We just said, go and watch YouTube. And then a tiny bit uh, of time later, one of them came back and said, I found something. And we had to write code to understand the neural network to see what it found. It found a cat, based, of course, YouTube. So it found a cat, but it found what being a cat is. And so it could find literally every cat on the planet. Well, at the time, we were published it as unprompted AI and uh, because we didn't tell it what to search for. But of course, as you can imagine, using the same algorithm, we could find every human, every Ferrari, every yellow car, and so on and so forth. 2016 was the breakthrough. For most of us, it was the idea where we are today with language models and transformers and so on. Started in 2016, the most pivotal moment for most of us where we realized it was very, very real was when we won the world championship on the game Go. And that was quite something because Go is not a game you can code. It's a, go it's a game that you need intelligence to be able to win. I left Google in 2018, wrote my book, Scary Smart, in 2020 to say that this is way bigger than humanity is giving it attention. 2021, after Scary Smart was out, I would beg my contacts. Remember, I was chief business officer of Google X. I knew quite a, a few people in the media industry. And in, in 2021, when I told them I wrote this book about artificial intelligence, they wouldn't put me on TV. They would go like, nobody cares about AI. 2023, they were all begging everywhere. CNN, you know, ABC, whatever you have, you know, everyone was asking me to be there because it was the event of the year.